course, seem to be willing to follow in their footsteps. Wendy Harlow, should black women date outside the race? Black women and all women should date whoever they want to date. I was um, raised in a home by a single black woman. Um, my mom and my father, my whole life, have had an amazing relationship. They raised me separately, but um, cordially. Um, in this time of my mom being single, I obviously met a lot of her boyfriends, and they were multiracial. She dated black guys, she dated white guys. Um, so I think for me, it was something that I was taught that I mean, all, all people are equal and everyone deserves love. Um, I've personally dated outside of my race. I've dated black guys, I've dated white guys. Um, and I don't think those aspects of them altered what went right or wrong in our relationships. I think whatever our disputes were happened to do with the type of person that I am and the type of person that he was as a person, not as a race. Was it easier or harder dating interracially or not? No, because I think everything is an education. Um, I think, you know, the main thing is hair. <laughs> um, I think, first of all, black men have a problem with, with the, the, learning these things as well. You know, like, you have to learn that, yeah, I have a beautiful wig on right now, but you're going to wake up with me with a bonnet, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think all these things are just an educational thing, whether it be race, whether it be men versus women, whether it be whatever it is, all these things just have to do with education. If you want it, we can get right to it. Make some vodka with some OJ. Skip some on it and let's get right to it. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of Get Right To It, episode number four. Appreciate you guys for tuning in again. I definitely want to send a big thanks to the person that sent me that little clip from Whitney Harlow. Definitely was appreciated. I felt like it was definitely needed for today's topic. And I felt like it's always good to, to have someone else's opinion and perspective on, you know, dating outside their race. I felt like it was relatable with today's topic. So I put it out there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But I'm going to jump into my experience with dating outside my race. And, you know, I'm only going to speak on my experience. I can't speak for everybody else. But, you know, like I said, this platform is, is open to anybody. If you feel like you're different from me, then, you know, it's open. You guys got the floor. But I'm going to speak on my experience. And I felt like with me, dating outside my race, I never really had, I, I never really was closed-minded to it. Like, I was always open to doing it. And that comes from, you know, my upbringing. You know, my mom was also, you know, a black young woman, and she felt like black love was important. But she never really put that burden on us. Like, I felt like it was always decision coming up. The youngest out of five kids, I felt like it was important to, you know, not be misled. And my mom never really misled us when it came to, you know, finding love and having a color on love. It was, you know, how you feel. I mean, it all when it all comes down to it, I mean, we got the final decision anyway. But, I mean, how do you feel bringing this woman home? Are you sure? Are you comfortable with her? I mean, is she someone that you can see yourself marrying one day? My mom was a big thing. She, it was, marriage was definitely big to her. So, I felt like, but for me, I felt like when it come down to me seeing a female, I felt like the first thing, my my first thing would be the attraction. The second would probably be where she stood as far as her belief, her morals and principles, and where she stood at in life. The third thing would probably be communication. I'm I'm a big, heavy conversation guy. You know, I like, you know, going back and forth with intellect conversations and topics. So conversation was definitely would be the third on the list for me when I look at a female that I want to date. Like I said, I'm, I couldn't see myself walking down the street and seeing a female and she may look good, but I might be like, nah, she Asian or she's white. I can't see myself with her. I never, that, that wasn't my lane. So I felt like I only can go on those three things once I got the chance to talk to her. So 
if those th- if those three things, you know, I felt like that I seen in her, or that could possibly happen, you know, it was the next step. But for me, you know, the experience was was always an open door for me, and I felt like I'm only going to speak on, you know, my experience. I come from an upbringing where, you know, we didn't see couples from different races. You know, I, I felt like we didn't see it. But for me, I felt like I go by the motto like this: never knock something if you never tried it. I felt like you shouldn't place judgment on something if you never tried it. I never tried big girls, but hey, I tried one before and, you know, it changed my perspective, you feel me? So, I definitely want to get y'all opinions on, you know, dating outside the race and, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, this podcast is open to whatever. So, you know, I got a few guests that's going to tune in today and, you know, we're going to move on, but appreciate you guys for tuning in. outside my race work. My lady is Spanish and everything, and I would say that it's very difficult at times because, you know, um, people look at you differently, you know, coming from different backgrounds, even in public sometimes. Sometimes people don't like seeing Spanish women with a black man, you know. It depends on different areas, especially in Miami. Because there's a lot of Spanish people in Miami. You feel me? Um, also, I would take it a step further in future reference. Like, if me and my lady would have children, you know, like, it would be difficult because of the fact that when it comes to our children, we would have to teach them and balance the fact that we have two different cultures. I'm Haitian, she's Spanish. So I got to make sure my kids also know about my side of the family. As, as, as far as my culture and also they have to know about their mother's side as far as their culture you know what I'm saying um, but besides that to me I believe it's a blend you know it's a blend it's a beautiful blend with with the Spanish culture and the Asian culture but to me it's, it's nothing wrong with it in my eyes but you know in society it may be different people take it as a different way some parents may not be may not like it and stuff like that so it depends but at the end of the day it has to do with what you as an individual man or woman like and you go along with it because there's going to be situations that you have to get through together if you're coming from different backgrounds different cultures Um, one of my callers from out 305, I appreciate you for tuning in, but I have another guest caller that's a female and she feel like she wanted to place her opinion on the topic. So y'all take a listen. Yes. And I personally prefer seeing a black man for many reasons. I mean, one, they're dominant, two, protective, three, humble, four, very attractive. I mean, I can go on for days, but let's be honest. You can also find these traits within any nationality. But it's a different spirit when I'm dating a black man. I was brought up in a home where my parents prefer me to date within my race. And not because they're racist, but because people don't understand our culture. I'm all for interracial relationships. So I took a different route. I feel as though you can learn so much about someone's upbringing, their culture, the music they listen to, the things they eat, how they eat, the way they dress, down to the way they pray. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel as though love is love. Once you understand that love isn't black, white, Chinese, Cambodian, etc., you can break that cycle of your generation's mindset. Love doesn't have a color. It comes in all shapes and forms. And that is that. What y'all think? So, dating outside your race, would I? Yes, I would. Have I? Yes, I have. I think, you know, regardless of what the person looks like, you know, you can found love and you can connect with the person. Um, you can, you're willing to learn them and you're willing to understand them and you can understand them. They say communication is key. However, 
I think understanding their communication as well is key too. Um, and that makes sense. So um, whether whether they're blue, green, purple, you know, white, yellow, you know, it depends upon you know how you feel. If you're more comfortable, you know, dating outside the race, but how do you know that you would wouldn't be comfortable if you haven't tried it before? Um, however, just in my opinion, I do think that dating a person outside your race is harder for them to understand your background, where you come from. You know, just just from my experience. The topic was the whole situation with Colin Kaepernick. Now, I felt like it was a you know a situation that I felt like I wanted to you know place my opinion on. I may have one or two people that wanted to talk about that too, but it's really nothing to talk about. To be honest with you, if you follow Cap, you know the story. I ain't even gonna get into it, but you know the NFL basically tried to hush him blackballing or whiteball or whatever you want to call it for standing up for you know black people and black people not getting there just do you know it's some you know black people that's out there in the black community that's you know being wrongly accused of certain crimes you know police brutality and you know etc but i felt like he stood up for that on a massive platform and he didn't have to so for me you got to give him respect for that. And regardless if you get an NFL or if you don't meet, for me, I'm always respecting for that because not too many people can do that. You know what I mean? He he risks providing for his family. He risks his NFL career. He risks a lot of things. You know what I mean? His whole life he played football. And now it's being taken away from him because he want to stand up for something. In the NFL, you know, they got their little ways of trying to hush you. But regardless of... What was done, you know, you got a man that stand for something, and I'm always respecting for that. And I felt like the workout itself, he still killed the workout, but I felt like they're going to always look at, you know what I mean, what he stood for, and, you know, that's just what it is. But regardless if he in or if he out, the man is definitely a hero in certain communities that are black, a black, in certain black communities, he's still a hero. And I felt like, there's nothing more for him to do. And that's pretty much a wrap for today's um, topics. I feel like today we we touched on a few things, some, you know, some personal and experience issues that it was definitely needed. I felt like it was nothing missed today. I felt like it was nothing missed. And that's why, I, like, that's what I wanted to start the podcast for. I wanted to make sure, you know, people have a platform to speak on certain topics, you know, whether it's day to day or something that they dealing with personal. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I'm gonna always speak on the truth and I'm gonna always uplift and motivate. That's that's just me, period. But you know, I'm all, I'm not always sunshine and you know rainbows. You know what I mean? I, it's, I go through some dark shit too. But you know, it's nothing better to do for me other than to vent on certain topics that I might not know the answers to. So I definitely want to appreciate the uh, people that called in and people that sent they, you know, their opinion in to the uh, podcast today because it was definitely needed. I felt like it's, it's a topic that, you know, people talk about today and people, you know, feel like it's something, some people feel like it's related. So I definitely want to... Big ups to those people that tuned in today and people that, you know, sent in what they sent in. So uh, I want to wish y'all happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Appreciate y'all.